Floss too, it's Valerie, and I am here to talk to you about cross-stitching and quilting and all kinds of goodies, and um, I hope that's why you're here too. <laughs> I am flying by the seat of my pants, clearly. Um, I'm trying to get this in before the end of March because it seems like I'm on a sort of one-a-month schedule, which... You know, it is what it is. I, I, who knows? Who knows why I'm so busy, but I just feel like I'm really busy. Um, anyway, I hope you've all been well and getting some spring weather where you are. In Pennsylvania, we have had a tease. We have had 70 degree days, which are fantastic. We all ran outside and got sunburned. And it's nice and sunny today. Yesterday was gray and gloomy and cold and rainy and it is supposed to be nice for a couple days and then drop, drop, drop to colder temperatures again. So typical end of March, April weather. I remember a week before my daughter's prom, uh, one April, there was a terrible snow blizzard and she, you know, normal 15 minute drive home from the high school took her four hours and she got stuck and we had to go rescue her. So who knows what's coming. But we just take it as it comes, and I just hope that all the things that are budding and so lovely now are not going to get frozen and frostbitten, but we shall see. Um, I did finally get out to the barn, and I started trying to clean up out there so I can show you, you know, film some stuff out there. I've had some questions like, why do you stitch in the barn? And the answer is I don't really, because... You know, my stuff is spread between the house and the barn. Um, we have a very old house with very thick walls and tiny bedrooms and no storage space. So um, when we rebuilt our barn, we, we made it into a garage and then built a room, the part that sticks out from the barn. Um, it looks like a barn, but it's a room that we all use for, it's like an extra room on our house, except we have to walk out to it. Um, my children have used it for all kinds of parties and slumber parties and Girl Scout meetings and, you know, play practice or whatever was going on, study groups, everything. They, they love it out there. Um, my husband uses it sometimes for business. He'll have business meetings out there and I use it when I can for all my crafty things. So um, it's a space we all share, and it's got a little loft above where we can house guests when they come to visit. You know, they can sleep up there, and there's a bathroom and everything. So it's a very nice space for us to use. Um, but as I said, the idea was I was supposed to store my craft stuff out there, but I did not realize, we, you know, did not realize in our short-sightedness how much everybody would want to use the space. So it couldn't just be a Valerie sewing cross-stitchy, knitting, yarn, emporium, rug-hooking place. It had to be a place that everybody could use. So I carved out a section of the garage and set it up as my sewing area. I put my cutting table and my sewing machines and storage out there um, and try and store cross-stitch stuff I'm not using out there when I'm not using it, like all my fabrics out there. In the house, I have baskets where I keep whips and patterns that I'm kidding up and things like that. So what I have to do is I have to schlep out and pick stuff out and bring it back in and rearrange. And um, as I said to you, I, in my short-sightedness, did not think about when it gets really cold, you're not supposed to run a sewing machine. The oil can seize and it won't be greasing the parts properly. So... If it drops below 40 degrees, you are not supposed to use your sewing machine. Plus, it's really uncomfortable to be out there freezing in a coat sewing. So um, my husband did buy a heater, which I have not used. He gave it to me for Christmas a year ago, and I haven't used it because it involves a propane tank, and I was afraid of asphyxiation or spontaneously combusting all the stuff that I have out there. Uh, and we air conditioned the big room that everybody uses, but not the garage part. So it gets really hot in the summer. So we are working on that. We're trying to figure out some sort of system that we could keep it, um, you know, regulated in temperature. Um, that's the barn story. Um, I know that Easter's coming up. It is like the last few days of 
March right now, and Easter is April 4th, so it's next Sunday. And I wanted to show you, I got the most beautiful card from my friend Dalian, who is so grateful on Instagram and also has a Floss Dew channel. And here's her beautiful Easter card that she sent. And I believe this is a quilt she made. Because this is what she does. She'll take photographs of some of her creations and make them into cards. And I just think that's beautiful. And she's so clever and so talented. And so thank you, Darlene. I loved it. And I also got this beautiful note from a woman who won one of the giveaways that I did. And it was the sweetest note and so pretty with the butterflies and the birds and things on there. And this is from Nam. And, you know, if I give you a giveaway, you don't need to write to thank me. But that's so kind that you did. And I love the car. I love the letter. And I hope things are going well for you, Nam. Um, okay, what else has been going on? Um, I was gonna show you some things that I'm into. Uh, you know, Teresa Kitten Stitcher says that what I'm all into. Um, so I thought, well, I will just tell you, um, a friend of mine sent me a link to our local PBS station. She was not able to attend, but they were selling tickets um, as a fundraiser to tour Jane Austen's house virtually in England. And this is something that's been on my bucket list. I always wanted to go there. And this was a virtual tour and the tickets were very reasonable and you could make a small donation as well because they're trying to not only do a fundraiser for the PBS station, but also um, <clears throat> they are trying to raise money to do repair work on Jane Austen's house's roof. So I thought, well, this is a worthy cause. <laughs> So I bought a ticket and I didn't know what to expect. I thought, oh, this will be, you know, <clears throat> Zoom tour. It was fantastic. It was wonderful. It was a young woman who runs the Jane Austen house in Chawton. And she was full of interesting things and knowledge and all kinds of little tidbits and told us all about the house and, and so much more than just about the house, just about Jane's life and her work and her family and my recommendation to you because I used to be a member of my PBS station long ago and I had let the membership drop and I'm going to up it now because I looked on the website they have so many wonderful things going on especially in this time of quarantining um, they are doing so many interesting lectures and zoom tours and things like that that you can attend just from the comfort of your living room it was wonderful and I was able to ask some questions because I had a chat room and she answered my questions and I asked for some book recommendations. Um, I'm interested in a lot of the history aspect, so I was asking particularly about that. Um, so I'm excited to read some of those. And I was going to show you, I, this is a book I had given myself for Christmas, um, which is called At Home with Jane Austen. And it's a beautiful visual feast. Um, it talks, well, I should be showing you, not me looking at it, all about the area. And it does have pictures in the house as well, but it's got all kinds of historic um, drawings and other information that would be of interest. Um, it is by someone named Kim Wilson. And uh, the con table of contact contents is the author, Steventon, which is where she was born, <clears throat> excuse me, away at school, Bath, travels and tours, stately mansion, Southampton, by the sea, Chawton, which is where she wrote and died, London and Winchester. <clears throat> and oh my gosh, can't you just picture Elizabeth Bennet strolling along that path or Emma or somebody. It's just like, I candy, I candy. So <clears throat> I actually also signed up for one of those great courses. Um, and if you tell me that people are not listening on your phone, I beg to differ because no sooner had I attended this class than my Instagram feed was filled with Jane Austen stuff, <clears throat> including, um, including one of those great courses, which I've always been tempted by to do. And this was a super good sale on the Jane Austen course. So I have signed up for it. So I'll be listening while I stitch to these uh, talks about Jane Austen and her works. So I'm excited about that. 
Um, another thing I want to tell you about, this is funny too, this will show you how stubborn I am. My sister-in-law has been telling me for years to check out this woman on YouTube. Um, you know, I'd moan about how I'm not getting exercise and I need to get exercise and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Excuse my voice today. It's allergies. Um, she has been telling me to watch this woman named Lucy Wyndham Reed. Some of you may be very familiar with her. I was not. And I was so stubborn. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check her out. Fine, whatever. And of course I never did. Well, recently I did check her out and she is wonderful. She has a program where you do... <clears throat> seven minutes a day. That's all she asks of you. You can do it more than once. Like if you get proficient and you feeling fit or whatever, you can do more than the seven minutes, but that's the requirement. Seven minutes of your day. <clears throat> and you do seven different exercises, one per minute. And then you do that routine for a week and then you pick a different routine and you do that for a week. And you can just follow along freely with her on YouTube. She's got them all on YouTube. But I, being a book person, bought this book, Seven Minute Body Plan, Lucy Wyndham Reed. And read like you'd read a book. <clears throat> and she will have these different routines. Like there's one called Love My Legs Workout. So she gives you seven different moves that you do for a minute consecutively for seven minutes. So you'll do... Minute one, you're doing half star. Minute two, you're doing traveling sidestep. Minute three, you're doing thigh toner. Minute four, you're doing squat kick, et cetera, et cetera. For seven minutes, seven different exercises. You do this routine for a week, and then you pick another one. Maybe you're moving your arms a lot the next routine. Anyway, I thought, I can do that. Even I can do that. Seven minutes, I can do it. So that's my big plan. I'm going to be following along with Lucy Wyndham Reed. And she's quite an appealing little sprite. She's very, very skinny and has sort of, a, there's something very appealing about her smile. She has sort of prominent front teeth that, I don't know, she just appeals to me. She's cute. So I think I'm going to have a bit of fun with Lucy. I hope that I can stick to that because my stepsister, not my stepsister, my sister-in-law would be so proud of me. <laughs> um... Third thing I wanted to mention is that we have been watching on television uh, a show called Borgen, which I highly recommend. Um, I had bought these as DVDs for my son years ago because he really likes politics and they're set in Denmark and I thought that would float his boat. We never kind of watched them. They just, you know, they had subtitles and well now, I'm sure you all know this, but we're such Philistines. It's taken us a while to figure it out, but um you can put your settings that you want it dubbed. And sometimes the dubbing is terrible. Like, it's very funny in this Borgen show. It's set in Denmark, but they've given them all various British accents. And so, you know, how they pick who's going to be what. Like, there's this working class English guy voice, and then there's a real Scottish accent and an Irish... The secretary, they've made Irish for whatever reason, you know. My husband and I have a laugh trying to figure out why they assign certain voices, but the main character, the prime minister's voice, suits her. So I'm I'm willing to go along. <clears throat> but I apologize for my voices. It's just terrible. I know my allergies are bad. I've been having to take medicine every day, but when I hear this, I realize how bad it is. But that just means everything's blooming. Yay! <laughs> And I'm sitting in front of, I'll take a picture of it and show you a huge batch of forsythia that my, forsythia, that my husband cut and put in the house so that it would open. And it has opened and it's not a foot away from me. So maybe that's setting me off. Anyway. Would you like to see what I've been working on? <laughs> I am nearly finished the stitch along with Fat Quarter Shop, the prim and proper, which I love doing. Designed by Laurie Holt, Sp uh, Stitch Long sponsored by the Fat Quarter. I just have to do this border, some little colorful flowery crosses, and the big X here, and then that one's done. Look how close I did that to the fabric. Isn't that ridiculous? I'm so cheap. <laughs> but um, I wanted it to look like the picture. So and I had this fabric left over, so I used it, and I'll make it work. Um, so that's really fun. I like that a lot. <clears throat> and I also, with the Fat Quarter Shop, finished 
um, my part nine of the Prim Stitch series by Lori Holt. And as you know, I'm doing mine two over two on her 25 count fabric. So it's going to be like a big wall hanging. And this is the one I just did recently. The, I think, yeah, the Church of the Bird and stuff. Wait a minute, let me fold it so you can see. That's the, that's the latest one that I finished. So I just have three more to do at the bottom. And then I will make it into a big wall hanging. I'm going to frame it with some Lori Holt fabric um, around the edges and make it like a quilted wall hanging. That's my plan anyway. And it's very cute. It's very bright and colorful, and I'm going to put it in my sewing room. That's my plan. Uh, let's finish up all the fat quarter stuff. Fat quarter shop, shop stuff first. Uh, serendipity stitch along. Um, I can show you. I've done part one, and I started part two. Um, I can't show it to you because <laughs> it hasn't. I think it's coming out on Wednesday. Um, and this is fun. I'm doing this actually on 18 count Ada, and it's fun to stitch on. It is the same pattern as the uh, quilt that they are. Here we go. Well, that's the pattern. I want to show you that. I want to show you the picture. Um, this is the the Make a Wish Foundation charity stitch along that Fat Quarter sh Shop does every year. It's a free pattern. They ask for a fifteen dollar donation to the Make a Wish Foundation. Um, they contribute to the South and Central Texas Foundation. You could uh, donate to your local Make-A-Wish Foundation, but they are trying to raise money for their specific charity, and they usually raise a lot of money. I think they are up to the 50000 mark, and then Kimberly Jolly and her husband contribute, as does Moda Fabrics. So um, their goal is $100,000, and by golly, I think they're going to make it. Um this is what it will look like. And the, there's a quilt done with Springbrook fabric designed by Corey Yoder. Um, that, is this, that is the twin image of this. And they just did it in a cross-stitch version for cross-stitchers. So I'm enjoying doing that. I have my um, Make-A-Wish Foundation stitch along piece from last year and I'm gonna put them, I'm gonna do a wall with all of them together. So that's, that's fun, I'm really enjoying that. And the pattern pieces come out every two weeks. So you can guess what's coming because you've seen the picture of what the whole quilt looks like. So it's just row by row we'll um, stitch along. So that's fun. I finished Blue Skin by Plum Street Samplers. Yay! In fact, here is the stitch along from the previous year. So I'll just frame that up and put it together. Um, here's Blue Skin. I think I put this on Instagram and said in all its wrinkled glory, but I loved stitching this. Loved, loved, loved it. Um, just had a lot of fun with this. And I think I have got enough room on this piece of linen to do those pink houses that I was talking about. Annie B's folk art pink houses from last year's, uh, I guess it was released last year in March for the, um, What's the thing they all go to in March where you buy patterns? You know what I'm talking about in Nashville. Nashville need a work market. Okay, brain. Wake up. <laughs> I didn't do a whole lot more on my Barbara Anna Love Never Fails. This one. Um, but I'm happy that I changed this color to blue. I'm going to carry on with that show you and everybody said yes keep going and do his trousers in blue as well so I think I probably will so this is as much as I've done and believe it or not I did change her skin tone that's actually much peachier than she's meant to be and I gave her um, blue eyes um, she is supposed to have these big round um, I don't know if you can see it in the picture actually 
Where'd I put it? I don't think you can see. She's supposed to have, um, it's like a pale yellow circles around her eyes. Which is cool. It looks very folk arty. But when I was stitching them, they just looked too dead. I don't want to say it, but they just looked like dead people to me. So I'm like, oh, no, she needs a little more color. So I tried to pick a color that was, you know, keeping in the spirit of the piece, um, but just a little bit more lively. So there she is. And that's fun. I love stitching that. That's on a piece of 30 count something or other. Um, 32 count dirty linen. Two over two. So it's a change from all my other stuff. But I love the pattern. And I hope when it's finished by changing her face and stuff, it'll still be, you know, have that lovely folk arty feel. I hope. So. That one. Uh, what else? Oh, didn't I bring it down? Hold on a sec. Okay, the last one was Where Liberty Dwells by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. And I had done this one previously and I wanted to do this one as well. Um, I'm doing this on 36 count picture this plus fog. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies. Here's the first one. Finito. And the second one, I so proudly posted last night that I had finished it. And then when I got up and looked at it this morning, I thought, you dummy, you did not finish it fully. <laughs> I had done... I did all the design part, but I have to fill in... Where is it? Oh. This, the white... The creamy white stripes between the red I still have to fill in all these I mean it won't take me any time at all but um, it was not finished as I proclaimed on Instagram so I, my apologies for that you can see I'm halfway up this stripe and I have to do those two stripes and then I have to do this section so that really isn't and and actually up to here as well um, but just glancing at it you can't tell But if you look, you can see it. So, oops, I have to finish that. And I will, I'll do that today. So, marching orders, finish that today. Then, some comments from last week about marching orders, which made me laugh. Um, a bunch of people said, finish that Teresa Coke at Santa. So I promise I'll do that this week. I, I haven't done it yet, but I will do it. Um, I showed it last week, and all I have to do is do a little back stitching around the twirls of smoke. It's the pattern ho, ho, ho. And the smoke just doesn't show enough, so I'm going to put a little bit of that color up the side and be done with it. And then also my oldest whip, um, So many of you kindly said, oh, Valerie, if you would finish that, you would feel so good. And I think you're right. And one woman said, oh, for heaven's sake, just, you know, slap a few bees on there, finish some honeycomb, call it done. You're, you're good. So I think that's what I'll do. I will stop worrying about where I was and what my plan was originally. And I won't worry about putting the verse back in. I'll just put some honeycomb and a few bees and finish up the flowers in the corners and then that I think I'll call that done. Which you're all absolutely right, would feel fantastic if I finished that, so. And I love it, and I will. Um, it's just funny how your tastes change, like whether I want the words in, whether I want the words out, you know, and then a few years go by and you want them in, a few years go by you want them out. Crazy, but that's, that's the plan. Um, I did do a couple new starts, uh, but they're so pitiful that I, I hate to even show them. Um, I loved Laurie Holt's idea of starting to commemorate different things through the month. So I figured um, St. Patrick's Day, 
my mom's birthday, beginning of March, my sister's birthday, the end of March. So I pulled out and finally started um, Anne Morrison, which is the stitch along that people are doing that I am way behind on. Um, this is the 20th anniversary stitch along hands across the sea samplers with traditional stitches, which is the place that you have to contact if you want to do this one. Um, I barely have a start, but I called it started. <laughs> oh, the shame, the shame. So I would like to continue with that. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'm using the silks for that, which is fun too, because I don't often do that. And it is a treat. Um, here are the colors. I'm doing it on 40. What am I doing on? I can't remember. It's not, it's higher than 40. It's possibly 46 count. Women. I don't think I went for 56. Let me see. Hang on. I might find a paper that will tell me exactly. 45 count Jersey cream linen. 45 count. Is that what I said? 45 count. So not 46, 45. Anyway. Excited about that. Um, the ones I wanted to start for... And I don't remember which was for my mom and which was for my sister and which was for her son Patty's day. But uh, the other one I was going to start was um, Blackbird Designs, Birds of a Feather. Wanted to do those for years. I'm doing it on uh, 32 count Picture This Plus Tyco. I might tea and coffee dye a little bit. Um, and I'm going to do that with NPI. I think that's what's called for. Yeah. NPS, they say, but it's NPI. NPI. So I've got all that ready to go. I just haven't really started. Here are the colors. Which I don't know why I'm showing you, because you can't really see them when they're in these bags, but Try and make it so you can see them. La -di da. Okay, sort of, sort of, kind of. Blues, greens, browns, reds, like pinky red, peachy yellow, creamy yellow, I guess I should say. Pretty, very pretty, springy green. Excited to do that one. And the third one that was supposed to be the new start, which I didn't get any new start on, but I'm just telling you my plans. Late to the game. Still need some putty thread. <laughs> Winter Rose Banner. Love this. I don't know. I just felt like a big house. I know it's a bit Christmassy in feeling for now, but I just felt like that big pinky house. So let's see if I get going on that. Um, that one I'm going to do on linen. <laughs> I did know what it was. It might be Brenda's brew. Ah, here it is. 36 count Brenda's Brew. I got that from, I think I got that from Dying to Stitch. Anyway. Those are some plans. And I've told you my marching orders. I have some quilts to show you. Because I got back some more quilts. I showed you one before. I think. 
Maybe I have to show them all because I can't remember which one I showed first. I do. I think it was the star one. All right. Well, the next one I got back was this one that um, I think the fabric was called Eliza. And I, I think of it as my Hamilton quilt because I stitched it for my daughter when we were in this huge Hamilton craze. She was in high school and we were, uh, there were some lessons after school I was driving her to and we would put the Hamilton soundtrack on and sing away. And um, I thought this was a pattern called Broken Dishes, which it is not. That's what it looked like to me. Um, it looked like china, you know, pieces of china. So that's why it made me think, you know, Eliza Hamilton sort of thing. Again, I had this quilted by Michelle Mason, Farmhouse Creations, I think is the name of her company. It's like feathers. I think on the back. Um, so I just have to put the binding on this. I think it's like a, a dark blue for the binding. I can't exactly remember. It's out in the barn. I have to go find it. And that's that one. I did put pictures of these on Instagram that you can see the whole thing better. But it is a real joy to finally have these done, I'll tell you. The problem is I have more that need to be done. <laughs> All right, that's number one. Number two, I call my, number two I call my picnic quilt. Because I can just picture a big old picnic, not that I really want to spread this out on the ground, but to me it's just happy, cheery, let's go for a picnic. I do know the name of this pattern is called Crosswalk. And um, this was one of the Missouri Star Quilt. Hi. Missouri Star Quilt Company. You can just follow along on the video and it, it looks difficult. It's not at all. It's super easy. So that's the pattern for this one. Pretty, pretty, cheery, cheery. And the back of this one has big flowers on it. I think I was going to have her put strawberries and then, I don't know, for some reason we went with these big swirly flowers, but that's fun. I have the binding for that. I just have to put it on. Ooh, I'm getting messages. How fun. Um, and then there's one more. Hang on. I'll get it. Trouble getting out of the bag. There we go. This one is also um, Missouri Star Quilt Company pattern called Square Within a Square, I think, and it's done with fig tree fabrics. Here's this one. Here's the back. And this one also has a big swirly flower on it, as you can see. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is, um, well, the last part of my plans. Uh, I've, I'm in a quilting mood. I'm going to, I have so many quilt kits and quilt started and pieced bits and um, I would like to get some of those whips finished too. So I've started thinking about mania and what my plans will be and I'm I'm leaning towards doing a whip mania, trying to finish off some of the things that I've started um, rather than have a whole bunch of new starts. But we'll see if there's some things that are like super tugging at my heartstrings, I will slip them in somewhere. I was gonna show you um, Hall. Mm. I got this book. It is called Scrappy School, Scrap School by Lissa Alexander. And it has some really pretty, I'm, I watched these Lori Holt videos where she shows how she stores um, squilt, squilt scraps. Quilt, I can't talk today. Quilt scraps. And I thought that is part of my problem. I have all my quilt fabric in dresser drawers, folded neatly, you know, some put in by um, 
collection, some organized by color, mostly with projects in mind, like, oh, this is a good grouping, I'll put this together. But they're in these drawers and I do not see them and I don't dare cut into half of them because I love them so much and what's the point of that? So I think if I would slice into some of these things, I would use them. So, hence the Scrap School book. And it has some great projects in here. Um, let's see if I can find the one that I thought in particular I was going to... Oh, I love this one. I thought that was cute. For 4th of July. But I have other 4th of July ones I'm working on, so I probably won't... This one I thought was cute. Look at these little girls. It's probably the little girls playing on the quilt that are so appealing. But isn't that fun with scraps and the big white background? It's just... I'm so mixed up because I love prim, 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 but I also love bright and cheery. <laughs> I think I'm getting in a patriotic mood because all the things I'm pointing out to you seem to be... Um, a lot of them are like red, white, and blue. So I must have the 4th of July in the back of my head. Anyway, it's got designer, lots of designers you know and love in the book. Kim Deal, Sherry McConnell, um, Lisa Bonjean. Um, this is Connie and Mary, I don't know them. Um, Amanda Jean Nyborg. Susan Akey, I don't know how you say that. Um, Sarah... Hugh Huteman, Principal of Getting Things Done, and Gudrun Erla, Amy Smart. I do know Amy Smart, but I know Lisa Bonjean, Kim Deal, Sherry McConnell, and Amy Smart. So, um, all fabulous designers. Another fun book to add to your stash. I have um, something beautiful I want to share with you. I know I'm late to the bandwagon on this one as well. But I got my order from, I want to get their name right, RNR Woodworks in Kentucky. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Look at this pattern stand. And I had them put the knobs on so I can put my iPad on there as well. But you can just stand a pattern up in there. And it can be in your living room, which is where I stitch a lot, and it does not look like some big old piece of plastic or, you know, I had an old beat up metal stand I used to put things on. It looks beautiful, and I can use it for my iPad, I can use it for patterns, I am just thrilled with that. And of course I have to get a thread floss winder, and they're just so pretty. They really are a thing of beauty. And I've actually ordered um, a short one for Fancy Floss and Silks, and a longer one for DMC, because I'm greedy that way. I have to have everything, <laughs> all the accoutrement. And, um, you know, with DMC, you can double your thread and loop it. And so that's where the longer one comes in handy. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm just delighted with these things. Um, I highly recommend them. R&R Woodworks in Kentucky. Gorgeous. Um, and you find them on Instagram, actually. Let's have a giveaway. The first giveaway I'd like to give you um, a chance to win is from Lila, Lila Studios. I ordered some things from her, and she very kindly sent along an extra that one of you could win. Her things are absolutely gorgeous. Go check her out on Instagram. Um, she has an Etsy store, Lila Studio. She's kind of a neighbor. Um, I, I, I don't know if you've seen uh, one of my previous videos. I fangirled all over her because I happened to go to one of our little local cross-stitch shops, which sadly is closing. Um, Just Cross-Stitch is going to close their doors after many, many years of, of service to the community. Um, Carolyn is, is finally retiring, and so sad as that makes me... Um, I will have lots of memories. Now I'm down to one. I have one LNS, which is the Strawberry Sampler. Um, and they have just moved locations. They have not closed. They've moved locations to a fabulous new space. So if you are in the Kennett Square, a uh, little north of Wilmington area, 
um, check them out. Um, it's really Chad's, I don't know if their address is now Chad's Ford, but they're right in there. If you Google the strawberry sample, you'll find them. But anyway, one day when I was at Just Cross Stitch, I met Lila and I was drooling <laughs> because I had just bought uh, her Halloween Quaker. I had bought um, Independence Hall. And uh, last year I bought all the ones that were in market that were so fabulous, the, um, the sampler and the smaller version of the sampler. I even bought that with wools because I'd like to try making that with the wool. Um, but anyway, I love her designs, and she is a fabulous creative person. If you follow her Instagram, she plays the piano beautifully, too. So lots of fun facts about Lila. Um, and I hope to meet her someday. But in the meantime, she very kindly sent along LW1884. So if you would like to win this one, uh, use the word red in your comment. Leave a comment, use the word red, and um, don't say giveaway, don't say prize, don't say contest. Um, just use the word red somehow in your comment, and I'll know you would like to be entered to win this. So there we oh. go. Out. Some nice things from the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, it's coming on spring and summer, and... This was sent to me by the Fat Quarter Shop, and I love this pattern. I have one I'm going to do myself. And it is homegrown cross-stitch pattern uh, from It's So Emma. Take one stitch at a time. So, if you would like to win this pattern, say home in your comment. So we'll write home. And do not say contest, do not say giveaway, do not say prize, do not say win, because I want somebody who's going to stitch this to win it. Um, it'd be nice if you would like and subscribe to my channel, but you do not have to. But that's always nice. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, I also got this from Fat Quarter Shop. I don't think I'm going to use it. It's 14 count Ada, but somebody might like to have this. It's a packet of Witchell 14 count Ada antique white, which is a great color. So um, if you'd like to win that, say um, antique in your comment put that down and there's going to be two chances for this one is um oh one is a different color so we'll make up a different word so if you want the antique white 14 count ada use the word antique if you would like graceful gray which is an also a great neutral color uh 14 count graceful gray use the word graceful in your comment so <clears throat> we have home, antique, and graceful. Until next time, I hope you stay well. I hope you get lots of stitching done, and I wish you all good things.